Welcome to another edition of the PsyCorp PowerShell Extensions Training Series. I'm your host, Michael West. Today I'd like to discuss scheduled tasks. And we'll do this in three stages. Uh, we'll first begin with creating a function, a reusable function called getLogChildItem, which will scan um, whatever part of the PsyCorp tree and find the items that have the locked attribute. Then we'll create a script that will call the get lock child item function with whatever specified criteria we have. And finally, we will set up an unlock schedule task, which inherits from the PowerShell script command, and that will call our script. And as always, if you'd like to follow along with a demo, you can download the module from the following URL on the Sitecore Marketplace. You can also check out our blogs or contact us through Twitter if you have more questions. So to begin, we're going to go to the Sitecore desktop and then the content editor. And if you uh, expand all the way under modules, PowerShell, script library, you'll see that we have a few sections here uh, to get you started. So the first one is functions. And this is where I've created the get lock child item function. And as you can see, I've already done it for the sake of time. And uh, in the next release of the Sitecore module, um, the Sitecore PowerShell module, you should be able to, to make use of that if you haven't already created one. We'll edit it in the ISC. Uh, nothing too crazy here. Just created a, a new function called getLockChildItem. And I'm going to uh, quickly review what's in the function. So when you call getLockChildItem, um, you have a few parameters available to you and if you check out um, the PowerShell documentation on command binding you'll see that there are features available to you when you use that um, that attribute but what we have is a path which you would specify some part of the content tree uh, that you're wanting to search in uh, let's say it was home uh, the home item then it would look for child items under the home item. Uh, you can look for uh, specific users that have it locked, uh, an item that's locked. You can indicate uh, an, an idle time that you, you deem as necessary to unlock the item. So for example, you could say, if after five days uh, it's still locked, then we should go ahead and unlock it. And uh, a switch that lets you indicate whether or not you wish to actually unlock it because uh, you can just return the items that are locked but not uh, not unlock them so that would be a big benefit and then the recursive switch which would indicate how deep into the tree you wanted to search so what's what's going to happen you call get lock child item you provide uh, whatever parameters so as you can see here in this example you could call just get lock child item which would uh, by default search at the current path and then you could call uh, get lock child, child item with the user account to look for and this third case um, there is a variable called me and that would show my login ID and I can say I want to unlock it and recursively look so we look at all the items in the tree below the uh, the context item. In this case, home would would be the path, the current directory, but if you're running from a scheduled task, you, you'd likely want to provide that path. And I've created a filter, and when I call get child item with the specified criteria, uh, I pass the, um, I, actually I pipe those items into the locked filter. You can review the uh, documentation on functions. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, the help document about functions and it talks about um, the difference between a function and a filter. Basically a filter uh, is when you expect to process each individual item that's being passed into the pipeline and so this would be um, a more specific use of a function. Basically a filter is a function but it's every item that's being processed gets called into here. Um, 
in the filter we're going to look to see if the items locked then we get the uh, locked field uh, I reviewed the API for Sitecore to to see how this part works and if the if the field uh, lock field exists if it's not null and if I'm looking by the locked by attribute then it would go down this uh, logic path if I wanted to see if they have an idle time specified and it's greater than zero then it would go down this path and ultimately we unlock the item uh, so I encourage you to go through line by line and and really understand how uh, how this is being done for example in the uh, in the idle time specified um, argument we look at all the sessions that are there and determine if that user that was provided uh, exists so if for example I've logged out and I if I provided my login but I've logged out and I've been logged out for a week um, matched would come back null so it wouldn't it wouldn't even go down this path um, okay so now that we've uh, just very quickly reviewed the uh, get lock child item function then we're gonna go back into the tree now this this function like I said it's intended to be reusable so I set it up to work the way I want and then I can come up with whatever combinations in, in using it the next thing that I set up was a task which is basically a, another PowerShell script uh, but it's intended to be used with scheduled tasks and in this case I I'm going to call that function that I set up and let's uh, edit that real quick now in theory I could have taken all that code that was in the get lock child item function and put it in here but then it wouldn't be really reusable it would only be you know intended for a task but you could do that if if you didn't have a, a need for a function you could put it in this task script so what we're doing here is we're gonna log to the um, sitecore log saying that the task is beginning and then we execute the script essentially the script we just uh, reviewed get lock child item will be loaded into the run space and then we call the function with the specified criteria in this case I want it to look for uh, an item that's been idle for more than five days I do want to unlock it and in the case of using the verbose switch which is available when you use the commandlet binding attribute if I were to execute this script the verbose would output any messages that I wrote in there uh, so if we go back to here and as you can see I used write verbose therefore in the case of uh, this line being met uh, or this um, this condition being met and this line was executed then I would have received an output in this window right here so that is a, a, a helpful thing to do when you want to debug uh, right verbose is great because just whether or not you're in the module uh, in the cycle PowerShell module if you're if you're just writing regular Windows PowerShell scripts using right verbose lets you turn on or off the logging um, and it only outputs to the console or the host uh, you wouldn't see it in any kind of uh, file log or it wouldn't affect the items in the pipeline that are being returned now that we've uh, created our task that calls the the function then we'll go into uh, the task schedule section and uh, quickly if you look at commands uh, with the Sitecore PowerShell extensions module you get a PowerShell script command and it calls the module and so in the schedules I've created a, uh, a new task called unlock schedule which inherits from the PowerShell script command and then I reference the task that I created up above here and I want this to run 
every day. Basically, this will run any time that the um, that the agent runs, and it checks to uh, checks to see if a uh, a scheduled task needs to run. It'll run every single time. So as often as it runs, this will run. And as we can see, it ran about five minutes ago. And uh, just for sake of time, we won't actually experiment to see if it works. But what would what I would do is I would lock this item and then if you waited the 10 or 15 minutes that the uh, scheduled task would run then you would see that this item would no longer be uh, locked uh, I encourage you to check it out and I will um, the code is actually checked in in github and so you can review it there but I'll put a reference out on the blog uh, so you know what we worked with uh, if you got any questions once again contact us through Twitter or uh, send us an email and have a good one.